together, I had, had meetings with them, and I'm not condemning them, I'm just saying that we're different. And the similarities are not there for us to be excited about, and this is what we've always told people who ask for this compulsive coalition, because, yeah, a lot of people are just wishing that we can have a coalition, but the question you should ask yourself is, where are these other young candidates campaigning? You can't find any evidence of campaign. Uh, we did town hall meetings, we were showing it live, we did you know meetings, we did uh, individual meetings, we went abroad, we went home, we went to swim in the river, we've been to we've been to see headsmen, fishermen, we've seen pastors, we've seen traditional rovers. They don't they, they don't do that. They sit down in one corner and they're looking for endorsement. Mm -hmm. uh, which might in my view is not the kind of politics we are practicing. We already have lots of people. Our supporters, our members, combined together, I mean, combined together, are bigger than several of the coalitions that are. So if anybody wants to join the coalition, they should come join us. And we will be open to it, but we'll also be very cautious about it so that we don't get infiltrated. So that is, that is to say that there's none of them, as we speak right now, that can even excite you to we, say I want to We've sure. already discussed this before. Mm -hmm. you know, um, it's just to it's just emphasize that. It's, it's, there's people. nothing to re emphasize. We've always made it very clear. So there was a time that people were worried mm -hmm. that maybe this show red cannot debate Kingston. Mm -hmm. And then we had the TVC debate. It was clear to everybody that you know my position on a number of issues that are different from Kingston and Mogadu. I'm just naming names now. The concern is that maybe Fela was a better speaker than Shore, you know, motivational speaker. Than and then, you know, they've seen Fela and I, we went at collaboration. He spoke, I spoke. I think our positions are very clear. Fantastic speaker, but I can also express myself. And beyond that, there's history, there's pedigree. Look, what have these young people done in the past? When the country had military rule, you didn't fight. When we had occupied Nigeria, you didn't fight. When we had uh, all kinds of issues that uh, injustice against people, you didn't fight. I'm not saying that you have to be a fighter to be president. I'm just saying that that is one consistent line I've always had is that I stood for that believe in. And for you to have me believe in you, you must have some consistency too. So nobody should be worried or be destroyed. The real coalition is us, and that's what is going to happen. Um, I told the story separately about how we went to meeting at Charlie Boy's house and they were saying, oh, the elders won't accept. They are looking for somebody they can accept. And they are saying, sure, it's not acceptable to the elders. It's true. I don't want, if I gain the acceptance of the elders, then I'll stop worrying about my sanity. They're talking about the political elders who destroy this country. So that's why I'm different. Well, is that to say that you don't feel anything is being removed at all from this new gen emphasis on new generation candidates, if they isolate you and decide to go and merge, nothing is being removed at all. Let me break it down to you. Mm -hmm. There was a time Kinsley and Fela went to Pax and Fela won. Kinsley said, even after accepting the results and documentation, Kinsley said he doesn't respect the outcome of the, the pact. The pact. Kinsley went ahead with his ambition. Did, he, did, anything, did anything get removed? Definitely no, if it was. The Kinsley even said that there was an attempt to kill his ambition, the pact at that time. Mm. So they've entered into another pact now, or coalition, they called the force. Mm. So let's see who is going to step down for whom. But what this shows is that Kinsley has successfully been able to browbeat Fela <laughs> to surrender to him. And that's what Kisner has always said, that Fela is not what the outcome of that result. You interviewed Kisner at the University of Lincoln. He said it very clearly, that the reason why nobody respected the outcome of Pact was because he didn't produce yeah. Kisner, which was an indictment on Fela's valid, you know, validity. Mm -hmm. So now, if Fela surrenders to Kisner, it shows that Fela was never real before. And now he has finally accepted the superiority of Kisner over him. Shore does not accept the superiority of Kisley and Fela over him because the empirical evidence shows that on the street we have credibility, <laughs> on the airwaves we have credibility, you know, everywhere we, are, we have, you know, plenty of credibility 
And I will able to avail them to show that we have more followers across the country because we actually go out there to meet people and we, people meet us across the country. We are not a Muslim candidate or a, a Christian candidate or a candidate for the elite or a candidate for business people. We are candidates for everybody. Look at today. The Speaker of the House of Representatives issued a statement that 30,000 Naira is grossly inadequate as minimum wage. <laughs> So finally, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, who is supposed to sit over the law that will make it legitimate, is saying that that money is not enough. Shoei has been saying it forever, nine months. Now everyone is coming. You, he will use the word living wage. I'll be an liar in good time, on good time, so no problem. But I knew that she won't go very far. And I must, I must say that OB is probably one of the few persons you have ever, I mean, abuse in your presence and say, this thing you are doing is wrong. And no. she never even took it against I don't you know. Others just say, he's rude. <laughs> no, <laughs> because they know I'm honest. They, they know that when I say things, it's because they are things I'm convinced about. And they can respect me for that. Because that that part of me has also rocked off on even their own struggle. They know, they know when someone has said the truth. Uh, there's nothing I said to Obi's face that I didn't say to Kinsley's face. And fella, I joked about fella that when we become president, he can get a position as uh, the DJ of uh, National Education Agency. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and when he, when he saw me, he made fun of me. He's like, oh, Minister of Information. And I said, <laughs> we have downgraded you. Because, <laughs> uh, but on a serious note, there is really nothing there. That, in what do you even follow our trajectory? Mm -hmm. Very well. You see that there's nothing that. Is going on now that we haven't spoken about too. When they started, when we went on MTA and they were asking about corruption, I mentioned that on the, the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Nobody could disprove me that two years ago I did reveal that the man had money that he couldn't account for. Mm. But the ESCC issued a statement condemning Sahara reporters for it. Mm. Yes. That's how and they are finally there. They are finally there. They have seen it. The other thing was. Why are they like, attracting the. The earlier best statements. Oh, they don't care. They, they, they have no history. The other thing you must understand is that there was also a conspiracy against us mm -hmm. in the debates. All these young candidates mm -hmm. were part of it somehow, either by directly by direct acquiescence mm -hmm. or complicity. When they said Shore should not debate, they knew that if they boycotted the debates, they would have been forced to bring me into the debate. But they were the happiest person that I was not debating. You know? <laughs> and they thought that after the debate, nobody would remember Shore again. After the debate, we were trending, even though they were the ones we were the ones people were talking about, even though they were the ones debating. And after that, the NTA thing showed superiority of not just Shore, but the advice that people didn't know about, who came and proved himself on national TV. And that leads me to the campaign, your campaign trips so yeah. far. Yeah. Uh, how many more elections are just here already? How many more states or places would you like to visit before the elections? We've done five geopolitical zones already. We've done the north, west, north, east. We just concluded and part of north central, we did just. We've done south, south, we've done south, east, except a point here. And now we're in the, we've done north central. Uh, and then we're now in the southwest. So southwest we uh, start pretty soon, I think on Friday, in the battle of your state. So that would be all for campaign. We are almost done with all the. I'm paradise. pretty much so many of the places we are going to now. We've already gone to those places in town yes. hall meetings. So it's going to be the second icing. I mean, it's going to be an icing on the cake. Icing. And talking about the just the last one you visited, mm -hmm. there was this meeting between you and the prophet Isa. Yes, uh, prophet Isa. Prophet. Yes, he was talking something about coalition that he also met Fela and the rest of them before. Uh, what is the story of that? What what do you make out of that so, coalition thing? He was well, talking about? I'm not religious, right? But I will give you. I will tell you the story of what happened. So the the spirit was speaking through Pro Prophet Abuba, mm -hmm. and uh, his uh, his flesh came in at the end. Mm -hmm. And his flesh was that he's had this conversation with Fela, and then he revealed that. Well, like, show where is the problem, show where is the problem. Can you just let him know that he might need to step down for somebody? But I told him at the end, I said, look, you know, this is what the spirit says. <laughs> <laughs> the, the coalition must produce, you know, uh, an, 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 an
they didn't have that kind of acceptance when they were around. So you could see there's a picture of Zeke when he went to campaign somewhere, it's like 12 people. Because that was how many people accepted their messages at that time. But we, there's no way we have been that we didn't have a crowd followers and we didn't pay for this crowd. You know, as opposed to the other big parties who would pay people, you, you know, rallies that transaction and what, you know, the kind of rally you do is the one that would go to meet people in their place uh, of existence and business. So that's why you don't know how people are. But that was actually not my question. I was asking, you didn't have to convince, put so much effort to convince people to abroad like you had to do. Yeah. People abroad right. have different characteristics from exactly people. that's what they, I'm so if you are abroad, if you are watching and you are watching on your own uh, on your own computer, you have data mm -hmm. because you put your data, you pay once a month and it's cheap, you have electricity, all those objective conditions are working in favor. In Nigeria, the opposite is the, the case. But I'm just saying that regardless, if people are not convinced. We wouldn't that's get up the kind of that is not in doubt. Yeah. People are getting yes. the message is passed on to them, but the percentage is unbelievably high, you know, for a political party that is five months old, mm -hmm. for a movement that is nine months old. I was the last person, apart from Opi, I was the last person to enter the presidential race. But the, our party, our candidature, enjoys the most rich Nigeria today. That is undeniable. If Nigerians in that way to be voting, no doubt. They voted already. We won by no, I mean, the one that I never will be counting. Yeah. <laughs> if they were to be we voting, we don't know because the elections are not. That's what I'm saying. You see, there are a lot of political calculations that would shock people in this election. You, know, you don't know that there are certain voters mm. who are not out there. And that was what killed Hillary Clinton in the US. Mm. She took it for granted that because she was the loudest, that most people would vote for her. A lot of people wanted to vote for uh, Donald Trump. They didn't say it in public. Even if you ask them, they'll tell you you're voting for Hillary because it's the most politically correct thing to say. <laughs> because if you say you're voting for Trump, you are already liberal as a racist. And but when it was time for voting, they voted for a different candidate. Uh, and that's what is happening in this case. If you are monitoring the way people are talking, the way people are embracing their ideas, people are looking for a core alternative. And that's where our popularity comes from. And you cannot discountenance that. It used to be that people say to you, oh, if you don't go to the market women, forget it, you know. But when you look at even what I like, really, it's market women are smaller compared to students and youth. You know, maybe the portion of market women is like 6 million voters. Students and youth, 22 million voters. That tells you something about what's my flip in this election. Mm -hmm. And you just have to watch out for it. But don't make any assumption except you have a critical evidence. But I'm saying this is not this is your table and your laptop is not enough to conclude anything. You are reporting the election with your laptop and two thousand and fifteen. I'm just telling you. But you know that you know that I also had people call That's me model. Had a network. You know, so your model is a model. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's let's talk about um, you know when you started out a lot of people began with criticism such as no structure, no this, no that. But now they are no longer talking about that. They have changed this to uh, okay, let's look at the crowd following him. <laughs> no, when APC is... and PDP have yeah, no, I'm I'm just going to rephrase it this yeah. way now. When APC and PDP have their own uh, show, yeah. like showbiz that they do, yes. they have this crowd. Does it discourage you in any way? No. Uh, look, what it did is they had a policy of uprising people, women and poor, so that they can bring them to a stadium when they crash shoot and then wave at them with music and water and food and then they walk away. There's no message there, no message in there. If they're sure that crowds can do it for them, they would have they would have gone back now and relaxed. They won't need to remove the chief justice of Nigeria in the most unconstitutional way. They have faith. They know that the relationship between them and the crowd is transactional. It's like, so it is the same crowd that went to APC rallies that are going to that of PDP when they come into town. Usually, yes, that's the way it works. It's the job of poor people to go to rallies, but they made them poor. So that cannot determine the outcome of an election. That much I can tell you based on. They don't have any structures, you know, I say it all the time. They have retail outlets for conducting political transactions. 
and they were like short price of intimidation, bribery, corruption, and then indoctrination. I don't even see indoctrination in it because there's no logic and you know there is no substance to what they are preaching. There's nobody who convinces anybody with an APC agenda or APC manifesto. So I think one of your cameras no, no, just, just a second. Yeah. It's working actually, but I just want to check. People are complaining about uh, the noise of the generator, so I want to see what I can do quickly. Uh, then tell them you are running this from Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> One second, people, you'll be back shortly. I'm still live. But well, people are complaining that the noise on the generator is too much. Well, let's continue, no problem. Um, so let us move on to another. Uh, you know, issue because I've stepped on many tools even before coming to contest at all. Um, one of the, I mean, another se se segment or sector of people you have probably stepped on are the media people. Yeah. You offended them too, somehow. Oh. You offended them because most of them refused to start reporting. They refused when you first started to be reporting you whenever you went out. Yeah. And then so, so there's, there's a relationship between me and the mainstream media. Uh, yeah. So it was like I, the offense started when Sahara Reporter started. So, and I came with this in your face media company that they all predicted the fail. You know, and they said, Look, who are you? You're know, not a professional. And I came, Sahara Reporter became a phenomenal success and actually drove a lot of them out of business. Uh, not in a way that they expected it. So there's that grudge. Hmm. Yeah. There's a second issue about them just looking at me and saying, you know, how dare you think you can be successful where we haven't succeeded you know, over these years? That's also it. The fact that there was a lecture I gave years ago, uh, and I predicted that if they don't change and upgrade their ways of doing business, they end up becoming writers for Linda Cage. They laughed at it. <laughs> now, so many of them can't even find jobs at Linda Cage's company because they are not digital enough for even her own kind of journalism. And what Sahara Reporters did encourage a lot of citizen journalists, people who are starting, because we lower the barrier to entry into journalism. They don't forgive me for that. And they don't also like me because I'm in their face. When they do wrong, I call them, I call them out, and they don't like that. These guys are, you know, they are part of part of the elitist system in the country that is controlling things, and they come and control them, challenge them. Nobody likes that. It's offensive. So they feel offended and they decided almost unanimously that one, they will be reporting to Shore. And secondly, that if they, they will report me at all, I have to pay for it. And he said to them, I'm not giving everybody money hmm. to report. I don't have the money first and foremost, but most importantly, can't well, pay for yeah, such I can't pay for such things. So you know, like they I see it in their uh, in their in the chat rooms, I mean, I mean, I'm a member of a number of journalists' uh, chat rooms, and I see how they dismiss me, you know. Like, but now they can't anymore. But they're still upset, you know. Uh, I remember when we started, NTA would never interview us, you know. Channels did a few times. Uh, That's TV exactly my question. What then did you do? It's what it's happened? That's my point. You know, they said it's, it's too. Tedious to even have a discussion about whether I come to the place or not because they're afraid that I'll say something that will just cause trouble and things like that. So it's some kind of gang up against my candidacy, but I'm used to it. They, they, they did that gang up once I it started with Sahara Reporters, it's just they are not forgiving me for what Sahara Reporters became uh, in the uh, media world. Yeah. Let me ask about visitation. You, you visited or near of the Something yeah. happened. Yeah. Since then, we have not really seen you visiting, you know, palaces as much as we started, you know, you were frequenting no, at that time. I, I, and people I were asking... I wasn't frequenting palaces. No, no, I mean... I visited... You, you did... I visited, I visited the of Kano. I visited the Alafi of Fulio. I visited the Deji of Bakura. Yes. And then the Army of the and happened. And I recently visited the traditional rulers of Abuja, you know, so it's not that I don't. I visited one also in Igondo. Uh, uh, so I still visit palaces, but to be honest with you, it takes too much work to visit a traditional ruler. 
considering that and I mean how say you know that after waiting for three hours for traditional uh, he's, he's already had a candidate going to vote for or who is working for his share waste of time I consider it to be and I prefer to visit the people. Mm. Uh, that's where I spend most of my time. You know, I've had a lot of traditional roller invite me to visit even then, and uh, some of them we talk to. And I'm fine with the way things are. Uh, I do not want to pretend that I'm going to spend my time waiting in palaces. When there are opportunities to meet young people, meet market women, meet people who are real voters, uh, who Vote for you, they are convinced that supposed people have made up their mind that they are going to work for government officials who are in power. Because the reason I ask that question is most of the people who are asking this question are from Benin City. Mostly, I mean, largely. Yeah. Some of them are saying, When are you visiting the upper of Benin? We applied to visit the upper of Benin twice. Uh, we didn't get any response. And then when we got the response, I was out of town. I don't have anything against visiting. I visited uh, the Ulu of Wari as well, uh, as you remember, I visited the Oba of Akaraba in Ondo State. So, if I have the opportunity, I will visit the Oba of Bini, uh, as well, if the opportunity presents itself. But you know, the Oba of Bini, you have to apply to visit him and they have to approve it, they have to issue a decree that you will visit. <laughs> so, until we get that, you know, I can always get the access. It's the Oba's palace, and you know, I would say Oba top, but yeah, it's <laughs> it's <laughs> All right, let's talk about 774 people government areas in Lagos in Nigeria. Uh, people are asking, although I saw from online, we ask people to apply to the polling unit agent, how far has that gone? Because earlier today, I featured your uh, media director. Um, uh, Rachel Onamusi, and she was giving out our book, but she didn't tell us exactly how many more people are needed. I don't think we need a lot of people, and I think like, we have about 120,000 polling units, and uh, they are collecting and calling them. So if we have different means of recruiting polling units uh, agents. One is through the online thing, but we also have representatives in states, local government, and watch across the country who are submitting names of agents. I don't know at this point how many we have, but I'm sure we're in shape. Let's talk about funding. You wanted to raise some amount of money on the funding and also look at it. Would you say the amount you have raised so far is sufficient to carry you? It's never sufficient, you? but adequate. Yeah. It's adequate to do what I we need to do. That's why we're still in the race. And we are the only ones who generally have been raising money transparently. Uh, and we can disclose who is giving us money. We read them out whenever we go on the couch, and we'll be on the couch tonight later on. So, it's, uh, at this point, I think we've surpassed 100 million uh, combined. Let's go for me and Zenin Bank. We didn't know that we would be able to open a local account when we started, and when that succeeded, that helped a lot. In fact, at this point, more people have donated to the Nigerian account than people donated from my brother. So that tells you that there's better interest, which answers your first question about local interest. And this is the first time that I know uh, in my lifetime that Nigerians are giving money for political reasons, the amount we're getting. Typically they collect, and they're still collecting from people who stole from them, but they know that we're not part of, we're not using public funds for election. They're giving to us. So that's where we are. That leads me to the question of, yes, since you started Sarah Reporters, you, have, you know so much about Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But are there new things you started knowing that you never knew before since you started this political journey? Anything uh, at all? If, if I do, it will be uh, it will be something that will be subject of a book or movie in the future. So if I tell you now who's gonna buy the movie, who's gonna watch Who's gonna come watch the movie? Let's yes, make it a movie because you don't read again. <laughs> don't read anymore. <laughs> uh, but nothing substantial, but just some very interesting findings. On a closing note now, uh, people you're asking people to vote for you uh, as president of Nigeria, but people are also asking President some questions. of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Of Nigeria. Yes. Uh, Those are two different things. You know, president of Pres Nigeria, President, president of, of the Federal, Federal Republic of Nigeria. One is constitutional, the other one is you can make that ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
All right, how about the locals? I mean, senatorial government, because most of the time when we see you, it's not in every state that you have visited that you raise the hand of the governorship candidate up and say, this is the person for governorship in this state on the platform of AAC. And we are not also seeing them doing as much as you are doing as a president. No, we, we meet everywhere. We had the governorship candidate in Delta, we raised his hand and we, uh, we campaigned together. We have a governorship candidate in Lagos, we met and campaigned together. We have a, a governorship candidate uh, in River State. We have in Enugu, Chidi, and Wanya was there. We have in Damawa. And we have a number of senatorial candidates. We have a of rep members who are contesting. Perhaps that you haven't seen me raising up hands because that's not our style. We're not the flag waving person. Maybe it's also reduce, yeah. yes, so that we also reduce the errors. So that the president doesn't hand over to another presidential candidate. <laughs> that's in a lighter uh, mode, but lighter mode. <laughs> everybody's doing whatever they can with a new party. We're younger, we are more compact than the behemoth bureaucratic parties that they used to. We do things differently, mostly digitally. I want last thing to Nigerians. Jew and then Nama come out. Then Nigerians in the camera. Well, what would you like them to do as the elections are? Trust me, you know, it sounds redundant to keep repeating the same. I think people know what to do. The people who are calling us, people who are likely watching this know what to do. They're doing what they need to do. I can only thank them. I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. They've been way more than I, I can even imagine that they've been doing. You know? So, a lot of people have lost faith even in a pan Nigerian you know, embrace of any idea that can. Until we came on board, and we're seeing how people, Europe, you know, we're seeing young people, old people all coming together and they meet me and they say, you know, I'm voting for you. And most importantly, you're seeing the convergence of Nigerians abroad and at home agreeing on the same thing and having a lot of uh, decisions around how they want the future to run. This is something that is amazing. I don't need to give people instruction. I have a feeling they know what to do. You said something just now that reminded me, and I'm sorry to hard. I'm supposed to round off now. Uh, you made a statement in the past where you said that the job people, that on the people, your part of the state especially was part of Ijo uh, or something, yeah, not necessarily Yoruba, and that. Uh, but if you are going to win election, at least let's start from your state. You are certain about your state, not divided against you. No, I, what, I, what I did was telling people my origin. And that's what I, I don't think anybody have an ethnic prison in which to look at me. You know, I'm the least ethnic candidate. People are confused about where I come from because I don't present myself as an ethnic child, and I'm not. You know, but when people ask me where are you from, I tell them I'm a Joe boy in one of those states. That, so that nobody thinks, oh, you know, you're lying. I speak Yoruba, you know, I'm a Yoruba speaking a job person. I don't understand the word of a job. I speak Yoruba and I grew up as a mostly as a Yoruba person, not as a job person, but when it comes when it turns to my origin, that's where we're from in the Mondo State. So there's no confusion about that. So you are clearing on those states? I'm not on those states. I'm a human being, you know. That's the most important thing. Because a lot of people are confused. There are people who have even said, oh, maybe you have abandoned your Nigerian citizenship, you are not American. I said, no, I'm not. I'm a Nigerian. I carry a Nigerian passport. And I know what I mean. The Nigerian passport is the heaviest passport in the world. It carries a lot of weights. Only negative. It's not the negative. Dead weights.